I'm pleased to introduce Drew Matat, the director of the Peace Paper Project. This is Drew's third year working with WSU Tri-Cities, and I really appreciate his continued work with us as well as our students' continued support of these types of workshops. So Drew spends his time between the US and his home in Hamburg, Germany, and that's where he is today in his studio. Drew received his Master's of Fine Arts in Book and Paper Arts from Columbia College, Chicago, and his Bachelor's in Fine Arts and Printmaking from Buffalo State College. He is the director of the Peace Paper Project and has established more than 40 studios across the world, inspiring others through his experience and career in paper making, in addition to several other art mediums such as photography and bookbinding, which he's going to lead us through today. Drew has already given two workshops with us this year. He gave the common reading lecture the, relating his experience to Trevor Noah's book, Born a Crime. And the second one was a studio tour and a demonstration of how to make paper at home. Both of those videos are posted on YouTube and are available to watch. And when Drew has visited campus in the past, we've always focused on paper making workshops. The missing piece has always been, what do we do with the paper after we make it? So we're really thrilled that he is able to leave this in this in a demonstration on how to use that paper in book binding. And we look forward to incorporating these kind of workshops in future visits when he's able to be on campus with us. So please join me in welcoming artist and master paper maker, Drew Matat. Nice. Thank you so much, Tiana Kay. Thank you. I'm very happy to be uh, back, um, and I'm very excited that we can do something with the paper. Last week we did a. Uh, we were working here in the studio, so the studio looks a little bit different uh, right now. It's a lot more dry, um, and I've set up here so that we can we can make paper. I want to show you uh, the paper that's dry from last week. Uh, this was one of the sheets. I think we made several sheets of paper, but this is one of the ones that we did the DIY version. So you put the the uh, pumpkin plant and the shredded office material into the blender, and we we blended it up and it's kind of a thick burly sheet of paper. We're actually, I'm going to use this today uh, when we make our books. So yeah, it's really kind of a million dollar question. After you make paper, what do you do with it? You know, and uh, with the Peace Paper Project, one of the challenges, uh, continued uh, challenges, is to kind of uh, encourage people to activate or to use the paper in some way. So at our, our workshops, when we're kind of boots on the ground, uh, doing workshops um, with survivors of war and terrorism and trauma and loss, people make a lot of paper and we uh, try to uh, encourage them to use the paper, whether uh, in, in the form of printmaking or creative writing <clears throat> or maybe origami. Uh, one year we did kite making and clothing design, uh, but most commonly we do some book binding um, that we use. Uh, we rely heavily on the Japanese staff binding, which I'm not going to demonstrate tonight because it's, it takes more like an hour and a half to demonstrate, so we don't have that kind of time tonight. But uh, the Japanese staff binding is one that we use. It allows you to kind of incorporate uh, elements of the paper making and things uh, into the into the book. And so uh, book binding is a really wonderful uh, component to uh, really paper making and the paper arts uh, because it allows you to do something. Again, this is a Japanese stab bound book. Um, uh, here's another one. Uh, <clears throat> the other uh, kind of uh, book, book uh, binding project that we do often when we're on campus or at shelters or whatever, it's kind of a hardcover book binding. This is to make something more formal, uh, like a journal uh, that, you, you know, I don't know, it just has more of a classy kind of feel to it. It's more of a hardcover uh, thing. Again, this is more like a four hour operation. So we won't be doing this tonight, but this is some examples of, of hardcover. Um, actually, the hardcover is really kind of nice because you can take uh, actual like a old bed sheet or something and use it as the cover. This is more complicated. Um, so tonight really what we're gonna focus on is really the, 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 the main, uh, how do you say, the entry point to uh, book, the book binding process and book arts. And that's uh, using the pamphlet stitch. Uh, this is where you will, if you take any book binding classes, this is where you will begin. Um, and this is really the foundation to all of the all of bookbinding. So this is level one 
Um, in addition to doing the pamphlet stitch, we're also going to explore uh, the accordion and the gate fold. So here's an example of a gate fold, and I'll, we'll talk more about all that. But um, at, if you want, as you're binding, uh, if you have a loose piece of, of rag or some rope or something, uh, you can actually bind this uh, to the spine as you're binding uh, the pamphlet stitch, and it gives you kind of a tie around. Uh, that's just kind of a nice ornamental component to that. Um, so here's another example. The pamphlet stitch is really simple, man. It's very difficult to see, but you'll get to see it when we do it. It's really only three holes. And so uh, it's, it's relatively simple in structure and in technique, but through the process uh, of, uh, of actually doing this binding, you learn the terminology as well as uh, real, real, what we would think are kind of simple techniques, but they are the foundation to all book arts, okay? So this is a really wonderful uh, um, a binding to, to study, uh, to do. Once you make one, I encourage you to promptly turn around and make a second one and, uh, and kind of remember the steps and uh, very soon you will be on your way to being a master book binder, which I am not. Um, but, uh, so here's just some examples of the, we're gonna do this kind of trifold um, cover, which I really, I like. Your piece of handmade paper that you have should be adequate for this. So you've got a, a piece that folds in as the cover and then the piece that kind of folds over that creates a nice envelope or cover for the material wraparound. Um, the, um, this is the one that I've kind of made up as the mock-up for tonight. And I'm actually going to switch over to this other camera if I can. Um, one of the things I want to uh, show you is, uh, uh, let's see, yeah, okay. Is, uh, is the accordion and the gate folds. The gate fold is what we're going to use for the cover. But the accordion uh, fold is something that's really nice and quite ornate. Is this, is this even in there? Um, uh, the accordion uh, fold is exactly as it sounds. It's a, it's, a, it's a fold that basically is one sheet of paper that kind of accordions out, okay? And so this allows you to have a, a spread of, uh, of pages that opens up. It creates a really uh, dynamic, or I should say more dynamic kind of experience for the book. So it, it actually helps bring the book from the you know, the standard form that we think of as a codex, just a book that sits on the wall and you open it and you thumb through and read it, it brings it into more sculptural uh, uh, realm. And it allows you to kind of tell a story in a, in, a, in a different way. So within the book arts, one of the things that we really are focused on is, um, is telling stories and, uh, and, and, and kind of studying the element of the turning of the page. So you turn the page and then behind uh, with, with each page turn, there's kind of this element of surprise. There's this element of wonder, you know, a certain element of curiosity, what's going to happen next. And, uh, and really good book artists um, kind of really surprise you and, and, and kind of uh, treat, treat you to these kind of uh, a great uh, storytelling process through the element of uh, turning the page and through the structure of the book. So the, the accordion is really wonderful. Here's an accordion book. Uh, by Yana K, Jack Jana K there uh, in, in Tri Cities. And it's a really kind of very wonderful uh, example of, uh, of how a book can open up and how you can, again, here use your handmade paper. And she's incorporated uh, typer text, so typewriter text uh, over the top of um, on some brown paper that she's kind of glued. And so you can kind of enjoy this, this book on a couple different levels. You can kind of read it just by turning the page like this, or if you want to kind of uh, experience the book as a sculptural object, you can kind of uh, you, you can kind of open it up like this. This just came off. Um, and also, she's put in uh, different kind of like configurative things where you can pull down and open up uh, pieces. And so, uh, the accordion is a really great uh, book uh, page structure. I guess we would call it some book structure. But this is an accordion example. So that's uh, one of the things that's really wonderful. Uh, and then really quickly, uh, I have a mountain of books here that if you're interested in learning more about book, 
book binding. Um, I can send these to Yana Kay and maybe we can post them in the bottom. But the real basic uh, book textbook that's used across the, the world really for book arts is uh, something called Basic Book Binding by A.W. Lewis. It's a very small book. It's very technical. Um, this kind of it starts you with the pamphlet stitch and it walks you through uh, more complex uh, bindings like I, I showed you earlier. Um, this was my textbook in undergrad and in graduate school. So it's not a very big book, you can see, uh, but it has all the basics. Um, this is called uh, a book before printing. This is a really wonderful book. book. It doesn't teach you how to make books, but it explores the history of the book before printmaking was invented. So before Gutenberg invented the printing press. And so it goes through the, the history of the book, starting with the clay tablets uh, in the Sumerian times, uh, all the way through the uh, papyrus scroll with the Egyptians and then the vellum scrolls, vellum and parchment scrolls with the, the Romans, the Greeks and the Romans, um, all the way up uh, to the invention of paper uh, to the point where printmaking happens. So it's actually really, I love this book. You know, I geek out over it. You can see it's probably my most well-traveled book. Um, and it's really about the history of the book before printing. Um, Edith Deal has another book, which this book is broken up into two parts. And so it's uh, part one is more of the history of the book. So it's the history of book trade in Europe. Uh, this, this book focuses on the history of the book from printmaking uh, to the 1930s when it was written. So, uh, then the second half of the book is all more technical on how to make books. So this is a really nice, more advanced. Um, the, one of the most common authors that's used today in the book arts is Keith, Keith Smith. Keith Smith is from Rochester, New York, and he's created all these wonderful books. This one's called Non-Adhesive Binding Books Without Paste or Glue, which is actually, our, ours would be an example. And he starts you with the pamphlet stitch. Um, that's where he begins uh, with your, with, you know, step one, which is really kind of cool. Actually, you can see he does the accordion and all that. So um, basically, this was also one of the textbooks that we had in graduate school. So the, uh, the, those are the main books that I would recommend uh, if you want to pursue this further. Okay, so we're going to make a book. I'm going to get started. So the, you should have uh, some paper. Um, here we're, I'm in Europe, so our sizes are slightly different, but it's not going to matter. Um, so you should have received in your package. Uh, you don't need a lot of uh, fancy materials or tools to get started with book binding. It's one of the things that's really a uh, beauty. You should have received a uh, piece of paper. The paper that you received in the mail is actually made from pulp American flags. Uh, that were donated by former uh, members of the military service um, from Wisconsin. So we pulped it up and then made paper out of it and then we were able to send you those, which is really nice and actually kind of timely, uh, you know, seeing what's going on in the country today. So we're gonna use that as the cover material. If you have any other uh, paper, handmade paper or decorative sheets of paper, let's see like, colored paper that you might have just from the like colored office paper uh, works really well. Um, you could, this is really wonderful to incorporate um, into, the, into the book and I'm gonna show you how and, and maybe why. Um, I'm gonna use as one of the decorative sheets the paper that we made last week uh, in, during last week's paper making session. So I'm gonna use that. Um, but you should also have 10 sheets of um, 11 by 14 uh, paper, just office paper. And so for each book, we're gonna, we're gonna use about five sheets, okay? So uh, the, um, you should have enough of these to do like one quick mock-up if you want, and then maybe one that's a little bit more, you know, your second one is gonna be a lot, uh, maybe more sophisticated and a little bit better. But, um, or if you wanna just make one big one, you could do that as well, okay? There's no, no rhyme or reason to uh, making a small one. So what we're gonna start by doing is, uh, well, second of all, let's see what this again. Uh, the tools that we're gonna use are very simple. Okay, so we've got our paper, we talked about that. Uh, you need a pair of scissors. So here, these are not fancy scissors. These are just some cheap kind of junky scissors. Um, you'll need a pencil. So a pencil is important because we need to make a couple marks, nothing super fancy, but a pencil, a pen works, you know, a crayon, if that's all you have. Um, a ruler is helpful, but not necessary. So if you have a ruler or a straight edge, 
a ruler helps you give, uh, have a better sense of measurement, but you can also eyeball things, it's okay. Um, and then uh, typically we use as a, a main, the main tool for a binder is something called a bone folder. So you can buy these at, uh, at your local art store, they're about $6 but uh, you guys don't need one. Um, you can actually just use a spoon, okay? A wooden spoon works well, but just a, a soup spoon uh, or a sugar spoon, a teaspoon, uh, anything that has kind of a rounded flat. We're gonna use this to kind of uh, uh, burnish or create a more firm crease. Um, again, normally a bone folder is what's used, but we're gonna use a spoon instead, instead and that, that's completely fine. Um, also in your kit, you have received uh, some thread. So you should have a little bit of uh, like a meter or a yard of black thread and a, and a yard of white thread. So this is good. If, um, if you don't have thread, like if, or you, and, uh, you, know, you run out of thread, maybe you make a couple books and you wanna make more. Um, I have to be quite honest, wax, uh, dental floss works fine. It's essentially, uh, it's not the same thing, but it works really well and it'll get you to where you want to go. The only thing is it only comes in one color, but it will come in multiple flavors. <laughs> so if you would like to have cherry smelling book, you could have cherry or mint. Um, but dental floss works really well um, if you're hanging out at the bus station or the train station and that's all you have in your bag. Um, the other thing that you have, um, and it might be hard to see, is a small uh, binder's needle. Um, the binder's needle is, uh, you know, you can go to your dollar store and just buy a, uh, for one dollar, you can get these little things that are full of like a hundred needles. Uh, there are needles that are very similar to binder's needles. They must be crochet needles or what have you. Those work fine as well. Um, but the binder needle is, has the, the tip of your needle, if you tap it with your finger, is not super sharp. It's a little bit blunt. Um, you know, it's not completely flat either. Um, and they're generally about an inch and a half long, okay? So this is about uh, what you should have. I would definitely encourage you to keep this needle because uh, you can reuse it and uh, keep it if you wanna to continue to make uh, books. So that's really all you need to uh, get started with the, with the book, book binding. So very few tools um, and nothing that you really need to run out to the store to buy, especially since you got your packets. So to start, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, take one sheet of your 11 by 14 paper and we're gonna fold it in half, okay? Um, so we're gonna fold our sheet of paper in half and then I'm going to kind of draw my finger across the edge uh, to make the fold and to create a really nice crease, right? I'm gonna take my spoon and then I'm just gonna reinforce that crease by rubbing it. I'm rubbing along the fold, okay? Um, so what we've done is we folded this piece of paper in half. So one sheet of paper whole, it's just a sheet of paper, once we fold a sheet of paper in half, it's called a folio, okay? So now we have our folio. Well, we actually, uh, if you wanted to make a book this size, you guys, you could, you very, uh, you, this would work really well. But I think I'm gonna show you how to make a paper that's a quarter the size. So basically we're half that size. So I'm gonna, now I'm just uh, putting my hand on one side of the piece of paper, and then I'm tearing, gently tearing the piece of paper along that crease. And because we use the spoon to press it, um, it should tear very easily and it should have a very nice kind of clean tear, okay? It shouldn't be super jagged. If it's jagged, it means you need to use the spoon more, okay? So I'm gonna fold it again. So I'm taking that my torn piece of paper, I'm gonna fold it in half again. So I'm lining up the side, creating a nice crease. Then I'm gonna use my spoon to kind of massage and press down. And then now I have my folio. So I'm gonna take my one folio and I'm gonna put it aside up here and then I'm gonna take the other side of the sheet of paper and I'm gonna crease it. I'm gonna use my spoon to kind of massage it. And then I'm gonna take my um, second folio that I've created and I'm gonna put it inside of my, my, uh, my first folio, okay? So when you, so I've, I've taken the, first folio and the second, and I put them together and I put them inside. So now I have two folios inside of each other. They're like uh, uh, together. Um, you know, the old term for this is called a gathering. It's a gathering of folios, if you will. Um, but the common term that we use for this now 
is it now becomes a signature. When you have two folios, two or more folios put together, it is a signature, okay? So we're gonna create one signature. So I'm gonna put that, my signature now aside, and I'm gonna take another sheet of paper. So we're gonna tear down basically three sheets of paper to create one big signature. So I'm gonna now uh, fold my 11 by, 11 by 17 sheet of paper. And then I'm going to gently tear it. And then I'm going to fold that half that's torn in half. And then I'm going to take that folio and I'm going to stick it all the way in the middle, right? So they're all going inside each other. We're going to create one big signature. See if that's we can leave that open. So again, I'm taking my sheet of paper, folding it. Creasing it, you can use the spoon. And I'm going to put that right inside. So I'm going to do this for one more sheet of paper. Folding the big sheet of paper all the way down, giving it a nice crease, using that spoon to reinforce that crease it helps us with the tear. And I'm gently tearing it. And I'm folding this uh, sheet of paper in half to create a folio. And then I take that folio and I put it inside of my, um, my signature. And the last one here. Fold it in half. John K, is this pace okay? So now I should have my, <clears throat> my signature. You don't wanna go too thick with it. Uh, it's hard to see, but when you look at the foredge, which is the front of the book here, um, it starts to puff out. Uh, and so if you put too many sheets in there, you have a really kind of, uh, your foredge is really coming out of that sheet. So it does look super awesome. If you have a guillotine cutter, you can go cut it. Uh, one of the tricks that we use um, when we're uh, putting to our folios together is that, I don't know if you can see that there's a torn edge on our folio and then there's a straight edge. On the top, there might be a torn edge, on the bottom there's a straight edge. Well, when we put our signature, signature together, we rotate the folio so that there's, um, there's never two torn edges together or never two straight edges together. So you have a torn edge on the top, on the first folio, then the second folio that you put in, you wanna have um, your torn edge on the bottom, right? So you offset the, uh, the torn edges. This creates a more uh, a kind of balanced look to the book because we have a torn edge. It, you just kind of offset it so that now I've got, <clears throat> I've got a torn edge on the top on the first folio, second one has a clean edge, and now my third folio, I'm going to put a torn edge on the top, right? And so I just offset them and rotate them. It's not the end of the world if you don't do this, but it definitely uh, makes your final book look a little bit more balanced. That's only because we're tearing it uh, and we're using hand and paper as well. So, um, so you just kind of rotate these. So we take our folio, our signature now, tap it together. We're gonna take our spoon and we kind of gently push down and rub the uh, spine. There we go. And now we have our signature. So this is, uh, this really is, I guess we could call it our text block. This is the base for our book. Uh, at this moment, we could just uh, punch some holes and sew it up and we'd be done, right? So the binding part of this actually is uh, actually the, sim the simplest component. Uh, but basically we've got our signature, it's folded. I'm gonna put that aside just for a second. And I want to show you um, how to create an accordion uh, fold. Okay, so we're gonna take one more sheet of paper, uh, a full sheet of your 11 by 17 uh, paper. I'm going to take my text block, right? Our, our, our signature, sorry, signature. And uh, I'm just gonna line it up here on my sheet of paper. So the bottom and the spine are uh, lined up with the sheet of paper, okay? And then I'm gonna use my pencil just to mark pretty much right where the top of the book is, 
of my, to the top of my signature, okay? Then I'm gonna flip the whole kit and caboodle over to the other side. And then I'm gonna mark the top again, okay? So you should have two marks on either side of our uh, 11 by 17 paper. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna then fold the sheet of paper at those marks. So I'm just gonna fold it. It'll make sense in a second. Crease it along. I'm gonna use my spoon to crease it. And then you're going to tear this piece off. This, this one tears, it's against the grain, so it tears a little bit more difficult. But I've torn this off. So I've got this little piece of paper that I don't need, I don't want. So I'm just gonna kind of put it aside and maybe use it for my, my grocery list later. So now I have a sheet of paper that's the exact size of my, my book, okay? So that's kind of what we've done. We've created, uh, we've created one of these. Uh, a piece of paper that's the same size. So I'm gonna walk you through that because we're actually gonna create two of these, okay? So we'll do, we're gonna do this again. So again, I'm taking my signature or my text block. I'm lining it up with the spine along the outside of my 11 by 17 sheet of paper. I'm using my pencil to mark pretty much right at the top. Then I'm gonna flip that whole doodad over, swap it all the way to the other side, and mark it along the top here. I put my text block or my signature away, and now I'm going to fold along those that pencil mark. So you start on one, kind of gently get it down, line it up, and then you just drag your finger across. And use the boat, the uh, spoon to reinforce that crease, and then we're gonna tear it. Of course, if you don't wanna have an accordion uh, component to your book, you can skip all of this together, okay? Ah, so now we have two sheets of paper. Ooh, here they are. Um, so uh, we're gonna start with one. And uh, the way that we're gonna bind this in is we're actually, it's a very simple method. We, we could glue these two pieces together to make a really long one, but you guys don't have any glue in your, in your book. So what we're going to do, so for binding, we need to be able to stick it across the gutter or across the spine. And I'm not sure how to better explain that. Uh, but basically what we're going to do is we want to score or make a fold that's about three quarters of an inch uh, from the, uh, the edge of the paper, okay? So I'm gonna use my spoon. So I've got my, my straight edge and I've lined it up. I'm gonna use my spoon to create a score mark. I'm gently push it down. And this is just gonna create a line. You're not gonna be able to see it with the, the camera, but this will allow you then very gently flip this piece of paper and fold it along the score mark, okay? So what's gonna happen is that this little tab, if you will, is actually gonna sit inside of the book so that when we bind it, it's gonna be, it's, it's gonna get sewn there. So it has to go across the, the, the spine or in our case, we're putting it in the gutter on the inside. So it's very important to have that tab there. If you don't have the tab, the page will just kind of fall out, which I guess if you want that, you could do that. So we're gonna kind of uh, um, create that tab. Oh. oh, I lost you. Okay, but I didn't lose you up here, did I? No, we're connected. See you. I seem to have lost the other computer, so that's, but that's okay. Okay, so um, I don't know what happened. I think it went to sleep. Uh, so basically now we've got our, um, our gutter um, or our, our tab so that we can fold it. And then to create the, the accordion, what we want to do, let's see if I can do this, is uh, we basically want to fold the piece of paper, so I'm basically lining my uh, text, my signature, sorry, my big sheet of paper over the top of my signature to, to see where 
where my page, my uh, the, the size of my uh, of my 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 fold here. So I'm basically so I've lined it up. It's a little bit hard to see, but I put it over the top and then I folded it to the fore edge. Okay, you can make it a little bit smaller. It's probably wiser to have it your folds be just a tad smaller so that you can pull it out. And by a tad, I mean like a 32nd of an inch or something. It doesn't have to be that much smaller. Uh, you could go as much as a 18th or something, but I don't think you need to. So I folded it. Now I've created um, my accordion, right? So now I've created my accordion. I hope that was clear. I'm going to do it again so you can see it. Um, and so now I've got my accordion piece. Here it is. And one piece is a little bit shorter, which is okay. You can kind of see this one is shorter. Uh, so it doesn't line up perfectly, but that's okay. That gives you somewhere to pull on it, okay? You could tear this off if you just want a partial, um, or you could cut You could cut it so there's triangles or circles, or you can make a heart or something. You could make it more decorative. Um, and so what I'm going to do now is I, I would like to put this, um, um, my accordion piece inside my uh, inside my signature, right? I don't want necessarily want it on the outside. I could put it on the outside. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but I kind of want to hide this tab, okay? So I'm going to put this on the inside of the first signature. So as the first folio. So as you open it, this is now will be the last, really. But I'm going to put it right here on the inside, and then I can put my text block, my signature back together. And so now that, that one is actually not on the first, it's on the last. So basically, when you get to the last signature, you go to pull this out. Oh, it's hard to see until you get it down. So it'll be like that. Okay. So here. So I put it inside. So I'll show you, it'll make more sense after I make the second. So it's same idea for the second uh, accordion piece. You've got you take uh, your ruler, you kind of measure out about three quarters of an inch. Here I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I'm using the back end of my spoon to score it. Give it a nice score and then uh, bend it over. And there we have our tab. So now I want to uh, take, I want to measure my, how it's going to fold out. I'm kind of putting my uh, full sheet of paper over the top of one of my folios. And then I'm going to fold it again, just kind of making it slightly smaller than the, uh, the actual book so that it doesn't stick out. And now I'm going to do the back fold here. And there we go. So it's going to have like this. Now this one will open up to the left, okay? So now let me build this out and I'll show you how it's gonna go. I'm gonna put my inside the first folio. On top of it, I'm gonna put my two tabs. And now I'm gonna put the rest of my signature over the top. Um, you can put it wherever you want. You can put it in the middle, you can put it wherever, okay? I like this, this kind of aesthetic. Gives it a nice balanced look. But you can put it wherever you want. I'm going to close this up. And now it's going to feel a little funny. It's got these, has these, um, these accordion pieces in it. So it has more, has more of a almost puffy look to it. And then uh, what I like to do is I take your spoon, because it's a little puffy, you can basically reinforce the, all these, the massage all the little folds are. You'll hear it kind of cinch or crinch down. There. Now that's a little better. Okay. So here we have our book. Um, um, uh, well, it's not a book yet, but it's close to a book. It's not bound. So if we want uh, to basically to put a cover on it, I guess what I was hoping to do is put this on it. But I think I'm just going to go straight to the cover. So to build our cover, you take your sheet of paper, the American flag paper. That you you were, that you received in the mail. And we're actually gonna do the very same exact thing that you did uh, for those accordion pages. We're going to take now the entire uh, book that we have here, and we're gonna line it up along uh, the, uh, 
the, the American flag paper. You're going to mark the top just a little bit above. I would give yourself uh, about a 32nd of an inch um, on the top and bottom of space. Uh, so make the cover material slightly, ever so slightly bigger. Uh, it's called a square. It's what we're after, which is kind of a, you want it to have a nice even top and bottom. Uh, now I'm going to flip the whole thing over. And I'm going to mark the other side relatively uh, in the same spot, okay? We could measure, we could use this fancy measure stick and we could measure the whole thing, but I don't think we need to do that. Um, so now uh, we're gonna do the same exact thing that we did for the accordion. We're basically going to fold that sheet of paper. This one it should feel a little bit more stiff because it's handmade paper and it should be a lot thicker. And we want it to be like that because it's your cover. Then I'm going to uh, use the spoon to massage my um, my cover, my fold. And then I'm going to very gently, and I don't remember how tough that paper is I sent you, so I'm hoping you're able to tear it. I'm just going to kind of gently pull on it and tear this. So then you have this really nice extra piece uh, so you can use it to write a letter or you could fold it up or you could make a little hat or you could do something with it. Um, this is uh, this extra piece that you have um, maybe you could use for a small book, um, uh, something like that. Here's a little piece of rag that's sticking out. So now I have my sheet of paper and it should be the same size as my book and it does look like it is. I'm very happy about it. So okay. So the um, let me make sure I'm going to position it correctly. So this is what we're creating, right? You want to be able to open your book like this. So, so we want to have our uh, take your book and have the the uh, fore edge, which is the open side, on the right side of your piece of paper. Okay, uh, eyeballing it here, making sure it's. Uh, it's good. This is where it is handy to have a ruler or a straight edge. Uh, what we're going to do is use that ruler or that straight edge to kind of bump it pretty close to the edge to our spine. Okay, can you see that it's bumped right up against the spine almost. It's again about a 32nd of an inch all around that we're looking for. And then I've got it positioned. So I'm going to pull away my, 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 my book and then I'm going to score it. With the back of my spoon, I can push my whole block away. And then, uh, because your paper is pretty thick, if you have that straight edge kind of in position, you can kind of it'll help you make that fold. So you kind of um, fold it over. And if your fold doesn't match up perfectly, you can kind of fold it and then use the spoon to massage it into position. Okay, so you should have a fold that looks like this. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and take my book, slide it right in there inside, and it looks like it's going to fit. So I'm very, very happy about the situation. And now I'm going to, again, if you have a straight edge, it's very helpful. Um, I'm going to, and I hope you guys can see this, I'm going to stick it right underneath my text block, and I'm going to have the, I'm going to uh, have the uh, ruler kind of stick out just a little bit, again, about a 32nd of an inch from the foredge. Uh, if you go uh, too little, it kind of it looks funny. If you go too much, it looks funny. So you want to kind of match your square. So I'm using my ruler to kind of have it um, sticking out of the, the foredge. And then again, I'm using my spoon to give it a nice crease. Okay, I'm gonna give it one, two creases. And then while I've got my ruler there, I'm basically going to massage the back of that uh, piece of paper to reinforce that um, fold. So that's gonna fold in. So this fold, you can see, does not cover the entire part of the book. So this will be the inside fold, okay? And then you've got your first one like this. So our book will then open like this. It opens to the left. And it opens to where you know I, I, I've got to flip them. So, um, so it's going to open to the right and then it'll open to the left. 
<laughs> I know, we'll see. How does it go like this? It's a thing that makes more sense. It's going to be this. There we go. Yeah, so open still left. I had it right. So, anyway. so here we go. We've got it. It doesn't matter. Uh, that part doesn't matter because we can always flip it. So here we've got our book. It's going to open up. And then we'll have our pages. There's the first page. And then here's our accordion that will come out. Okay. So now we have we need to bind this book. If we don't bind it, it's going to fall apart and it, we won't get anywhere with it. So to bind the book, um, it's very simple. Basically, for a pamphlet binding, you only need to make three holes. It's the most simple binding uh, that you can do. So you have two uh, types of thread. You have a black and a white. Uh, so I'm just going to pull off uh, about a, a, a meter or a yard to match what you guys have. Um, so here I'm going to use black because it's a little bit easier to see, I'm hoping. Um, then I'm going to uh, take my, my thread and my needle and I'm going to pass the thread through the eye of that needle. Whew. You're definitely not going to be able to see that, but you guys all know how to sew a little bit. So uh, I'm going to do that, and then you're not going to tie it off, okay? If you can see it, I'm not sure if it's possible, but I'm actually going to take my needle, <laughs> I'm not going to be able to see this, and I'm going to pass the needle through, where is it? Through the thread, actually. Let's see if you guys can see that. See, I'm actually puncturing the, the thread with the needle. And I'm going to pull that needle, that thread down along the needle. You kind of see it? And that is going to create a loose tie, OK? So this is probably about the only thing I learned in graduate school. So it's uh, basically I'm passing that needle through. I'm puncturing the thread, passing it through. And now it's gonna, I'm going to pull it pretty relatively tight. This will stop it from falling off, OK? So this is kind of important. Um, so now what I'm going to do is uh, open my uh, signature with all its pages and all of the accordion things all packed in there with the cover. So I'm going to go all the way to the center. So find your center, very center of the, of the whole packet here, OK? So you make sure you have the center. And then I'm going to make three holes, OK? The first hole is going to be approximately in the center, OK? So take your needle, and you're going to push it right through. Kind of see I've passed the needle right through this, um, uh, my, 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 my entire book, OK? Should go through pretty easily. I think we got to the right needles. It should have just be sharp enough to do that. So. I've punctured the center, so I've put my center hole in. Now, using my left hand, because I'm right-handed, you need to hold on to your book very firmly. You don't want it to shift around, OK? Because I've made a hole. Kind of, You can actually kind of take the needle and kind of rock it back and forth to reinforce your hole to make sure that it's really kind of solid hole all the way through. Then while holding on to my book so the pages don't shift, I'm going to drag my, my needle or take my needle all the way to the top and about, um, about a half to two thirds of an inch from the top, I'm going to poke another hole that goes all the way through. Okay. So here I've got a second hole. See it? And I've passed it through. I'm not sticking the needle all the way through yet. Okay. I'm just kind of making the hole. Then I'm going to withdraw that needle and I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom. And again, about Two thirds, half an inch to two thirds of an inch from the bottom. I'm going to stick that needle all the way through. Oh, it's a little bit tough, probably tougher for you because you've got, well, that's more like three quarters of an inch. So again, I'm just, we're making three holes, okay? One in the center, one on the top, about half an inch or two thirds of an inch from the top. And again, one on the bottom, about a half to two thirds. Mine here, this is clearly about three quarters. So I, I've kind of, I'm not perfectly. Um, balance, but that's okay. So um, you don't want to move your book. You don't want to shift your pages too much because we have to pass the needle back through those holes. So now we're going to do the binding. So we've got our three holes. I'm going to start uh, from the inside of the book um, with my needle and thread, pass it through that hole, that first hole that you made, okay? 
You're going to pass it all the way through. You're going to pull the needle all the way out. And kind of pull that thread until you've got about, I would say three inches is pretty good. So you see I'm leaving about three inches tail on the inside. This is where we're going to tie this off at the very end. So give yourself a pretty handsome tail. I think it's important. So this is about three inches. And now I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go all the way up to the top. And from the outside now, this is actually the hardest part. I'm going to try to find, <laughs> if my book didn't shift, I'm going to pass that needle all the way back through the hole that I made. So it's a little bit tricky. My professor in undergrad, he wouldn't even bother punching the hole. He would just sew it up as he went, which you could do as well. So here I've passed it all the way through uh, that, that hole and I've come back inside, okay? So now I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna go all the way down to the bottom hole and I'm gonna push it out. The hole that I've punched at the bottom of my book, and I'm going to pull the string, the thread, so that it looks kind of like this. Okay, so I've gone to the bottom, pulling it tight. Oop, oh dear. You don't want to pull it too tight, you'll pull your tail out. So now I'm going to go back to the from the outside, right? I'm on the outside of the book. I'm going to go all the way to the middle of the book. Sorry, to the to that middle hole that we started with, and I'm going to. Try to find it. You got it. Whew. And uh, I'm passing it all the way back through. I want to be on the other side of the thread uh, of the of uh, of my tail of the of the piece that's going down the middle. So there's like a yeah, you can kind of see it here. There's a you want one thread your tail to be on one side. And then your finishing one to be on the other side. So you're tying, you're tying this middle thread down. Okay. So now I've got it all kind of like um, laced up, and now I want to tie it. So I can actually take my scissors at this point, and I can cut that needle and thread. I can liberate myself from the needle and thread, put that aside for my next book. Uh, so now I'm going to take my tail and my two threads here that are remaining, and I'm just going to tie a square knot. Oh dear, come on. If my little fingers can do this. So I tie one, tie it once, and then tie it twice um, to hold it. Okay, pull it nice and tight. And then uh, I use my, you can use your scissors to cut it so that it's about three quarters of an inch inside. Okay, so then you can take that and put it in that's the way that's going to be. So now we can kind of close this up, make sure there's our little tabs, maybe not the most attractive. Then we take our go like this. So it's gonna be like this. So when you open the book, you can have your first page. So this would be like, you know, my memory book or something. And then you've got, what I like is you've got uh, an accordion tab, so you could basically have something. Maybe you could you could cut into this, you could do different things, whatever you could draw. You can kind of expand things over, and and uh, the the only unfortunate part is you have this little tab, which you could tear down, or you could cover it, or you could just incorporate it into the design. But you could cut along here, you could cut shapes, you know, you could cut triangles, or you could put circles or whatever, you could make it so that there's some kind of furniture in there. And then you open it up and then you get this really nice spread, right? And then, uh, if, you know, the experience of the book is then you have normal pages, normal pages. And then when you get to the back, you have another um, accordion that opens up so that you have a book that kind of actually is quite long. It's probably about 36 inches long, right? 28, 38, and then the uh, kind of like also from as from an object point of view, say you want to put it up in the gallery or something, you can kind of arrange it like this so that it becomes more of a, a, a sculptural or three-dimensional object. Okay. Um, 
One of the things you can do uh, if you have handmade paper, you have extra handmade paper, more than the, the flag paper that you have, um, you could basically make any of these inside pieces, uh, these any of these folios that we folded up to create that signature, those can be handmade paper. Most uh, commonly, it would be the very first signature. So you'd have like a piece of handmade paper that would be right inside. Um, but I kind of neglected to do that. So then you kind of like um, can take this and fold it down and then you have your, your book. Also, uh, going back to the, the pieces that I showed you at the beginning, the books that I showed you at the beginning, if you wanted to put a tie on it, which I would encourage you if you've got something uh, like an old rope or something, uh, basically it's a little bit more complicated, but when you sew, uh, when you start sewing, you uh, put it, you line it up along the, your hole and in along your spine in that first hole, and then you just you sew it in as you're, as, you're, as you're binding it, okay? So you do this while you're binding. It's a little bit tricky for your first book, maybe for your second one, uh, you, can, you can do that. But I definitely encourage that. It's nice to have a little tie. You know, it's just aesthetically kind of a, a nice little piece. You could also put a button somewhere and kind of glue it that way. So that is the pamphlet stitch with an accordion uh, and the gate. The gate fold is this piece that kind of opens up, okay? And then uh, with this piece that kind of comes out can go either direction. So it's the pamphlet stitch with accordion and gate fold uh, folds incorporated into it. Um, so that's basically what we have time for. So I think that uh, I, I hope that you uh, take the time to build one of these books. I would encourage you to also use the scrap paper. This is really wonderful. You can make some really cute small ones. You can really play with the gate fold or the, the accordion fold, um, binding, uh, sorry, folds, just to see how they kind of, um, they work with your, with your book. You can also make a bigger one if you wanted to make your bigger one. This is a good size book, I think. Um, um, but I encourage you to make one and then turn around and make another one because it, it'll uh, kind of be imprinted in your memory uh, fairly quickly. And uh, you'll be able to do this uh, uh, with friends and family and uh, anytime you want to make a book. Okay. So please, if you have uh, any questions, you're welcome to email me. So I'm drew at peacepaperproject.org. Um, or if you make a book and you do something really cool with it and you want to share an image uh, of the book with me, I'd be more than happy to see it. And uh, I'd like to see what you guys do with this paper and, uh, and these books. Okay. All right. Thank you, Drew. Thank you. My book, um, my book worked. That's it. Yeah. Oh, you made a big one. I, well, and I didn't have, um, I didn't have a ruler. So things are a little bit uneven in places, but I'm really pleased with how it turned out. And I think I can do something with this extra edge to like um, put some uh, something um, decorative, like maybe even a button to exactly wrap it. Loop things. Together. Yeah, so you've got so, a little bit. Of, you could sew a button on there to have your. That's. Can you hold it up again? I want to see that. I, I think it's, yeah. So my edge was a little bit longer. So I'm thinking I'll fold it over okay. and put a button right here. Awesome idea. And that's with the American flag paper, right? It is. Cool. So yeah. it, it, it folded and, and it, it, it cooperated? Yeah, it did. Yeah, the edges tore nicely. And I've got my um, my accordion piece here. Ooh, look at that. So I'm excited to, I've got some of the paper that um, from workshops when you were here before of yeah. some of my paper. And so um, I think that is maybe how I'm going to spend some of my weekend is yeah. using some of my paper to do this. So thank you so much. Cool, thank you. I'm excited to see what you do with it. I'm so glad that you were able to follow along and, and, uh, and do it. Yeah, so I think this will be great for our students and we'll look forward to sharing this with them so they can, um, they can make their own books with their own paper too. So thank you, Drew. Okay, thank you, Yannick. I'll, I'll talk to you soon, okay? Okay, bye-bye. Bye, thank you. <laughs>